got to say, this app is probably the cutest one that I've seen so far today. Um, let me introduce you to the Verts. Hello, everyone. Our team, the Verks, Verity, Ruben, Carla, and Sean. We made an app that works. Next slide, please. Staying motivated to live a healthy lifestyle is something we all want. At the same time, we like to take care of others. Our project, Scranimal. Scranimal is a wellness app that rewards us for tracking our healthy lifestyle by being able to give our Scranimal treats. How does it work? You can get tokens for tracking your water intake and steps walked. We have a shop where we can use these tokens to buy and then give cute presents to our happy Scranimal. I would like to pass on to Verity to show us this app. Good afternoon, everybody. So just before our little video uh, starts here, we're gonna see two user journeys through our app today. A brand new user who will sign up and register and be taken to their pets. And then we'll see an existing user with some data uh, in the app. So if we could go ahead and start the video, that'd be great, thank you. So we're on our welcome screen and our user here is directed to register. So we are currently checking our database against existing users to see if this person already has an account. From there, they can go through and choose from a number of pets to assign to their account. And we're going with specs today. We're gonna to go and track some water. So we're using optimistic rendering to track and add water to our account. And you can see those tokens going up and down. This will allow us to purchase items for our Scrannel, as Ruben said. We're gonna try and purchase something a bit too expensive and the app's gonna tell us that we can't have that yet. However, water is always free, so we're gonna buy some for specs and send it over to the inventory this morning. This item has then been sent to our users inventory in the database, so that's gonna be rendered on the next slide and allowing us to give that to our pet. So it disappears from our inventory and can't be used again. We're gonna take our specs here for a bit of a walk, so we're gonna manually input steps for now and reward the user. In an ideal world, we would link this up to the phone's telemetry, but a manual input work just fine for our MVP. We're now gonna log out and show you Joey's account, who's very good and drinks lots of water, so has data in a diary to go back over seven days and see just how well uh, Joey's been taking care of herself. And when we make a spelling mistake, we're told that we don't exist, so we'll fix that and sign in. So we will have our diary option here as we give it a click. You can see we've got a few tokens for good behavior and we've got our week's input. So I'm gonna hand over to Sean, who's gonna tell you all about how we built this and the tech we used to do it. So take it away, Sean. This is the right slide. So um, in our planning phase, um, our team had some experience with some online resources um, like uh, Trello, Miro and Figma. And we feel that this really open the door for some open communication um, early on in our development phase to make it a more collaborative experience rather than it being one person's idea and um, moving on. And it's another team building this one person's idea. It became our idea. Um, our final choices for tech stacks I'll be talking about in the next couple of slides. Um, but a few of the ones that we explored but decided not to go with, so something like Vue.js we thought was a really good front end tech stack and slightly different from React, which we learned during the course, but was probably more suited to uh, web-based um, applications, whereas what was specifically mobile-based. MongoDB was a, a great database, um, but we did have some difficulties um, when trying to connect with it in Mongoose and Mocha, which Carla will talk about towards the end of the presentation. And Docker, we had a very, very brief flirtation with um, that probably wasn't successful, um, um, but we didn't really have time to implement it. So we can move on to the next slide, please. 
So in the end, we decided to use Firebase for our backend, uh, which was a segue from Mongo after our difficulties when we spiked it. Um, we found the documentation, documentation even, um, relatively easy to follow. Um, uh, occasionally, it was a bit of a cryptic crossword, but there were also plenty of other online resources to help us um, to help us uh, guide through it um, and, and get us interacting in the correct manner. Um, for scalability, if, for example, we wanted to add any additional pets for people to choose from in the app, we could scale sideways. Or if we had wanted to add any extra functionality, such as tracking food or uh, having users be able to interact with their friends and their animal a bit, their scrum animal a bit more, um, we could scale upwards. If we could move on to the next slide, please. So for the front end, um, we finally decided to go with uh, React Native as our front end stack. Um, Previously, like I mentioned earlier, we had built React apps. Um, so the syntax was relatively similar, and we used uh, well, we used to using component-based um, app building. It had solid documentation with very clear, clear guides, which enabled us to pick it up really quickly. And when we were learning it, actually only two members of the team went and learned it, and then we pair programmed with the other two that didn't. Um, and we were able to teach each other that way purely from the, the documentation and a few guidelines. Um, React Native is also mobile focused. With us building a mobile focused app, it made sense for us to use it. And it also let us relax a bit when it came to uh, cross platform functionality, i.e., iOS or Android. So um, we didn't have to learn Java or Swift within four or five days and get the app running. We also used Expo Go. Again, it was highly recommended from uh, many guides and documentation. And it had oodles and oodles of additional functionality packages. For example, if we did want to introduce a pedometer, um, there was already an API with Expo Go that we could have used had we the time to implement with the app. And finally, Jest, which was we're used to using. Uh, it was um, quick to set up for unit testing some of our utility functions. Um, and I'll pass you on to Carla, who can talk about some of the challenges that we faced. Thank you, Sean. As a group, we faced a couple of challenges while creating this app. So for the tech challenges, we had a bit of a struggle and spent a few days making MongoDB, Mongoose, and Mocha work for our intended purposes. So we decided to timebox it and move on to Firebase, which got the ball rolling for us. As for our version control, it was a challenge merging branches without messing things up in the beginning. So our solution was to do what we call a mergey mergey dance together every after morning standups to ensure that nothing breaks the main. We did our best to protect the main at all costs. We also found that working with dates was a bit of a pain. So we got some utility functions to assist us with that. A very common challenge in a diverse group of people is the differences in artistic direction, but we managed to go through it with open and honest communication at all times. And finally, as a minor challenge, we are all adults with personal appointments that sometimes fall within project hours, but this is easily solved with constant communication inside and even outside project hours and with the help of Google Calendar. Uh, given more time, we would like to explore deep into Expo and React Native and add more functionalities and features into the app, including a food diary with nutritional information and barcode scanning capabilities, pet health and mood bars, more interactions with your pet, syncing functionality with your phone's built-in pedometer, and so on. Now I'm handing it back to Ruben for some final notes. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. So Q&A. 